So as most of you know by now, the Nintendo NX has officially been unveiled as the Nintendo Switch, set to be released next year in March of 2017. I was going to make a video about the Nintendo Switch on the day of its announcement, and then my computer crapped out on me. I was a bit deterred to continue with this idea, since the optimal time to make a video had already passed, but then I remembered. My job isn't to cover news, it's to cover the news that people forget to cover. So logically, I should wait a few days before covering this topic, and that's exactly what I did. 72 hours into the world of knowing what the Nintendo Switch actually is. Here is what people have been overlooking. Shut the hell up and listen. So, as most of you know, the Nintendo NX was officially unveiled as the Nintendo Switch, which turned out to be exactly what Eurogamer said it was. Surprise, surprise. That's right, the Nintendo NX turned out to be a console handheld hybrid with detachable controller segments on the sides that fits into a docking station to be displayed on TV. Other rumors that were confirmed include the device's uses of cartridges rather than disc media, the ability to use the detachable controller segments as individual controllers, and a 720p resolution screen on the tablet itself. So the first thing I want to cover is a lot of people are already writing this thing off as a gimmick, and as I've talked about in some of my previous videos, gimmick seems to be everyone's favorite buzzword for describing everything Nintendo tries, even when there is no actual gimmick in place. Want a perfect example? The Nintendo Switch. There is no gimmick here. It is literally a home console, and then it is a handheld. A home console is not a gimmick, a handheld is not a gimmick. When you take it out of the dock, it is a handheld, which you play just like any other handheld. You put it in the docking station, it becomes a box next to your TV that you play with a standard controller. Where is the gimmick? Please, someone show me. Honestly, I don't know why anybody is upset by this thing. It's innovative just like 50% wanted from a Nintendo product, and it can be played as a box next to your TV with a standard controller just like the other 50% wanted. It's a win-win situation. This is exactly what everyone wanted. I don't know why anybody is complaining. Really, it sounds like most of the people who are complaining are people that didn't want it to be a hybrid, which in that case is just the salt, and salt dissolves quickly. So I have a feeling that these people will mostly be gone by the time this thing actually hits shelves. And then you also have people claiming that this won't be met with the same fate the Wii U had. However, I can already see that's not going to happen. The Wii U had a hard start from day one, because up until the console was already half dead, there were still people who had no idea what the hell the thing was. The Nintendo Switch on day one already made itself very clear to anyone who watched that trailer. People are praising the trailer because of how straightforward it was. It's a console, and then it's a handheld. There's no tricky feature about it. There's no confusing aspect. That's literally it. There's nothing to get confused about. Actually, the only confusion I've seen, albeit very little, are people commenting on the trailer asking if this is the Nintendo NX. And this was to be expected seeing as Nintendo gave about 13 hours notice until the reveal. There were probably some people that went to sleep before the Twitter announcement even came out and then woke up and were completely unaware that the thing had even been revealed. So it was understandable that that was going to happen. However, as for people thinking that it's an add-on to the Wii U or an add-on to the Wii, that's not anywhere in sight, at least from what I can tell. It's looking like a lot of people love this. I have even seen comments from people saying that they lost faith in Nintendo back in the days of the GameCube and are once again interested because of the Nintendo Switch. I don't think there is much that we really need to worry about in regards to any of that. So yes, I foresee this thing already having a much better chance of being a hit than the Wii U. Another thing I would like to bring up is the footage seen in the trailer. Now, a lot of you may not know this, and so I'll go ahead and explain right here, is that when footage is usually shown in hardware trailers, such as the one for the original Wii U, for the Wii, and for the one for the Nintendo Switch as we just saw, the video game footage featured in the video is most likely not actual footage from the device itself. Cameras sometimes have difficulty capturing this type of footage, so this footage was most likely shot separately and then overlaid onto the footage to make it look like the game console was actually on. This would explain why we see frame drops in the Breath of the Wild scenes, because that could simply be Wii U footage shown on the Nintendo Switch tablet. Another likely possibility is that a lot of people notice that there is a considerable frame drop when the actor pulls the Nintendo Switch tablet from the docking station and it switches 
switches from the TV to the tablet. Now, I am about 100% sure that there will be a certain performance drop when that happens in the final product. However, most people are going to pause the game before pulling the tablet out of the dock. I don't know why they had him do that in the trailer, because realistically you're not going to leave your game unpaused, get up, and then go pull something out of the dock. Especially if it means your game will immediately be transitioned from the TV to the tablet. Especially in a game like Breath of the Wild, where an enemy could just show up at any moment and try attacking you. So yeah, any frame drops in actuality when this thing actually hits the shelf are probably going to go unnoticed because the game will most likely be paused when you pull it from the docking station. Another problem that often gets brought up is the device's power. It has been confirmed by NVIDIA themselves that they will be the system on a chip providers for the Nintendo Switch. They will be using, in specific, a custom version of the NVIDIA Tegra processor, which was originally used in the NVIDIA Shield game console. Now, they did not go into specific on what they mean exactly by custom, we don't know how different it is from the original Tegra, but rest assured, the system will most likely be powerful enough to run in pretty much any game that you throw at it. For example, the PS4 has about 1.84 teraflops. The Xbox One has 1.31 teraflops. The original NVIDIA Tegra runs at about 1.1 teraflops. So the original alone was not too far off from modern day console hardware. And like I said before, we have no idea just how different this custom Tegra chip is from the original. As for graphical power, the console was shown in the trailer running Sky remastered so I think that gives us a pretty good idea of the kinds of graphics it can output and yes I am aware that Bethesda made it clear that they have not 100% confirmed Skyrim Remastered for the Switch. However, they did straight up say that they helped Nintendo film the trailer and also approved their game to be shown on the device. So I'm pretty sure that it can run. Otherwise, Bethesda and Nintendo would have not put it there. Nintendo is the last company in the world I would accuse of cinematic bullshotting, so I'm pretty sure that the Nintendo Switch will be able to run Skyrim Remastered as shown in the trailer. The only mistake that I can see Nintendo make, and what concerns me is that it looks like they're already possibly about to make this mistake, is wait until it's too close to the launch date to show us more of this system. For those of you who don't know, Nintendo later confirmed on the same day they announced the Nintendo Switch that they plan to not tell us any more information for the rest of the year. The Nintendo Switch is set to launch next year in March. That means at minimum, we won't be getting new information until January, three months before the system launches. Depending on when it launches, in March, maybe even more like two months. We still don't have a launch lineup, we still don't have a price, we just still don't have specs, we still don't have a battery life for the mobile form. I'm really hoping Nintendo is not relying for a majority of their marketing and recognition of this device to come from a single trailer. Especially when that trailer came out five months before the final product even hit shelves. Now onto the games. In addition to Breath of the Wild, which so far is the only confirmed title, we also saw what appeared to be a bit of footage for a new Mario game for the Nintendo Switch. However, I have a feeling this was either pre-recorded footage or was a swiftly thrown together test level in the new Mar for the new Mario game. The reason I say this is because if you look very carefully, there are ring-like objects that are just randomly placed in an area where Mario would never logically interact with them. So I, re I really feel like they just threw this together in like the engine and was like, you know what, let's, let's, let's just put this on the trailer. Yeah, that, that sounds good. But aside from that, we also saw what appeared to be Mario Kart 8 and what appeared to be Splatoon. However, if you look carefully, the Mario Kart 8 footage has a drastically different GUI with the ability to hold two items at once and King Boo as a playable character. This could either be Mario Kart 9 or it could be like a super port of Mario Kart 8. I guess time will tell. Also, Splatoon, as you can obviously see from the trailer, is drastically different. For one thing, it appears pants are now an option Originally, in the first Splatoon, all female and male Inklings wore the exact same type of pants. It looks like pants is an actual editable clothes option, along with hairstyle. Oh, that just- oh god, that just- that just looks so cool. I want this already. I want this. I hope this is Splatoon 2. Like, th there are so many changes. Also, I think this map is a new map. There are just so many changes here. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry for going off. I'm just- I'm, out of all the things we saw in the trailer, this is what I'm most excited for. Splatoon 2. Oh, I want it right now. And of course we saw Breath of the Wild, but we already knew about that. So what other games do I think are coming to the Nintendo Switch? Well, we learned in the last shareholders meeting, which happened a few months after E3 this year, 
that the last two Wii U games would be Breath of the Wild and Paper Mario Color Splash. However, we also knew that Miyamoto was working on Pikmin 4, the next installment in the Pikmin series for the Wii U. I'm pretty sure it's been moved to the Nintendo Switch. So I'm about 100% sure that at launch, or at least very soon after launch, we will get Pikmin 4 on the Nintendo Switch. Also a new Mario game. Whether or not that bit of footage we saw actually is from the new Mario game, I do not know. But we do know that we are getting a new Mario game. All we really know about it is that Miyamoto wants something really related to Mario to be shown off at next year's E3, so I'm pretty sure that what we saw in the footage is not something that will be done by launch. And we also know that it will be made in the same engine as Breath of the Wild that was confirmed in the shareholders meeting as well. And also third party games such as Just Dance from Ubisoft, possibly a game from Bethesda. I have a really sneaking suspicion we're probably going to get a port of Fallout 4 on this thing. It feels like Bethesda is just trying to put Fallout 4 on anything that can run it at this point. Not to mention, while I don't like Fallout, I think Fallout on, on the go would be a really cool thing. Now, here's a little bit of speculation about the Nintendo Switch. Battery life, I'm gonna say it's probably going to be around three to four hours. That sounds pretty bad, but let's be honest, we're living in a first world country. When are you going to be away from a charging source for three to four hours? Even in the car, you could have a car charger. Even at the airport, you can have airport chargers. I worked at an airport for about half a year. At least in the one that I worked at, they had chargers built into the bottom of every seat in the waiting rooms. Friendly reminder, that was also the battery life for the original 3DS and no one batted an eye. So I don't think that's that big of a deal. Not to mention, 90% of the time you're going to be playing this thing as a regular console. Size, I wish it was a little smaller, to be totally honest. That was the one concern that I had, that it wouldn't be small enough to fit in my pocket. But, I guess in this case, I... I guess I'll let it slide. Sorry, I'm, I'm just a little bit bummed about that, but I have something to elaborate on that with, which I will follow up in a bit. Controllers themselves look comfortable as hell. Dude, I am so hyped. Dude, just to hold this thing. This thing just looks so comfortable to hold. I, I want it so bad, like, right now. I don't even want to wait five months. Like, just this thing... Oh, this thing is so perfect. This is my dream console. Thank you so much, Nintendo. <clears throat> Nintendo also confirmed that all the docking station does is have the ability to charge the Nintendo Switch, project the picture onto the TV, and, in their own words, provide more power to the system. What this means in particular is not exactly clear. What it most likely means is it probably overclocks the processor and ups the cooling fan while it's docked. So, essentially, it looks like the docking station is the supplemental computing device. And I have a feeling that later on in the Nintendo Switch's lifespan, there will probably be an upgraded version of the docking station that will make it even more powerful. And what I'm excited for is the news that all the internal components are handled by the Nintendo Switch itself. Which means if you wanted to, theoretically you could buy multiple docks and have them for several TVs in your house. You want to show someone something that you just did in a game? Take it out of that dock, go to your living room, put it on that TV. That is just something that I absolutely love. I'm so glad Nintendo is doing that. And lastly, where do I see Nintendo going from here? Well, here's what I think. A few years from now, they're probably going to release a smaller, more compact version of the Nintendo Switch that is meant to be entirely portable. And this will be essentially the replacer to the Nintendo 3DS and will be their new main handheld. It will be of the exact same internal workings, the same infrastructure, so this will go in line with Nintendo's vision of unifying their software development departments because they will be able to make a game and it can be played on both the normal Nintendo Switch and the handheld Nintendo Switch. As for the size of the device, I think the screen part should be around the same size as a closed Nintendo Nintendo 3DS XL system, which is around 6 inches by, I want to see, what is that, 4.5, 4? Four? I have a 3DS right here, kind of. I think that's a perfect size, I can still fit that in my pocket. Oh, that would be so superb, I would buy like 10 of those and just give them to people because I want everyone to experience this thing. <laughs> yeah, so as you can tell, all in all, I'm excited for the Nintendo Switch, I think you guys should be too. There's no gimmick here, there's nothing to hate here, just everything here is awesome. It's a handheld, it's a console. When it's a handheld, you play it like a handheld. When it's a console, you play it with a normal controller looking at your TV while it's sitting next to your TV like a normal console. There's no gimmick here. There's nothing to hate. I think Nintendo has a really, really good opportunity with this system, and I think they're going to do great. And I hope they do great. I just hope they get the message across this time. Right now, they have only one trailer, and that's all they plan to show us for the rest of this year. There's a lot of things here in Nintendo, there's a lot of things people need to know about this thing, and I hope that's not something you let get overlooked. The switch is on! What on earth? Unattachable controllers! <laughs> <laughs> okay.
Okay, let's see. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Because a vision softly creeping left it seems while I was sleeping. <laughs> I'm just kidding with this last part, guys. I just, this was a golden opportunity. I hate being a sore winner. I really, really didn't want to do this, but all my friends convinced me that I needed to do this. I have no ill will against Super Metal Dave. I think he's a great guy. Yeah, he was wrong. That's no reason to hate him. My, my point with, my goal with this channel was never to be right. It was never for the sake of being right. It was meant to prepare you people for what I knew the NX was already going to be. If anything, I should be the one apologizing to you guys because I didn't get my message out fast enough and now there's a lot of people out there that are upset with what we got. Like Super Metal Dave for an example. But, Super Metal Dave is a cool guy. Leave him alone. No harm done, no hard feelings. We're all in this together. I hope, I hope everyone will be able to enjoy the Nintendo Switch.